So uh, the actual title of the talk is, as said, LLM Deployment Strategies, Balancing Efficiency and Environmental Impact. I mean, like, nobody wants to have the environmental talk, right? So, um, uh, actually, do not be afraid. This is going to be a feel-good talk. Here's a kitten! <laughs> and it only costs, like, 30 grams of CO2 emissions to create. So, like, um, uh, if I'm getting it right, the, the, the uh, CO2 emissions of all LLM applications on Earth currently is less than 0.0274% of global emissions. That is not a lot. I mean, shake each other's hands, say how well a job we've done together. This is probably like, hey, dark mode, um, uh, probably less than, than, than 0.03 megatons a day. It's barely 11 meg megatons a year. Um, yeah, as an industry, we actually started to care. Uh, we actually got to be a bit bitter. Who's a uh, show of hands? If I can see you, I cannot see you, but it's fine. Uh, who's around here knows that their company is a B Corp? Wow. Okay. Platform that is age, eventually. But um, who um, has like Echo Various? Uh, who signed the climate pledge? Climate pledge, anyone? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, who's carbon neutral and has been since the 18th century? Okay. Um, the thing is that uh, we got better, but the glue does smell great. <laughs> and uh, <sighs> we got to start burning coal again like there is no tomorrow. And this is actually how you get to not having a tomorrow. Uh, you know, every ton of CO2 that is currently emitted into the atmosphere doesn't come back anywhere. It's thermodynamics. It's not me. I'm sorry. Yell at science. Uh, so, uh, this is not about being, you know, like a tech optimist uh, or, or, or progressive. Science doesn't work like that. CO2 doesn't get... And, uh, uh, you know, like uh, these 12 megatons a year is roughly 10 times as much CO2 as is emitted by bombs. And bombs are bad. I know that some people don't agree, but it's fine. So, like, uh, um, uh, I, mean, I don't want to single out any single company. I think we're all as bad, right? And, and there is no universe in which this is fine, right? It's, and it doesn't matter if you're... I'm sorry. For, for the, it doesn't matter if you're next to a hydroelectric plant. Uh, at any rate, a lot of this is embedded, right? The A100s everybody bought are still running at full steam and not serving much purpose. We have H100s and Grace Hoppers. And it's kind of not them, right? It's us. So, um, okay. Taking two million H100s sold this year, a few Grace Hoppers, 700 watts per machine, 500, 6,000 watts per machine. PUE 1.1, that's gonna... 12 megatons. Uh, roughly 12 megatons added, extra emissions added this year. Okay, this is on top of my 11 megatons that I just told you about. So we're doubling or more than doubling every year, which means if you believe in linear regression, around 0 0.5 gigatons in five years. Now, we're like creating 40 gigatons a year globally. This shows on the graph. So, um, uh, maybe, oh, oh yeah, commercial break. This talk is sponsored by Reality and Wiley. So I actually licensed this cartoon. It cost me 40 bucks. Uh, and I asked an LLM to do the same thing. 
I pay like ChatGPT and Cloud and Anthropic like around 40 bucks a month. But you know, it's the all you can eat buffet and I'm already paying. So it's kind of ridiculous of me to have paid Wiley for their cartoon. So we can just steal it. And it's kind of good enough. It's incredibly sucky, right? But it's good enough for this conference. It's fine. So um, we'll compensate, right? I'm, I'm sorry for the carbon footprint if I break this. So. Um, <laughs> like, it's going to be around uh, these 12 megatons a year. It's around $0.7 billion worth of compensation. Chump change, right? Ooh, I mean, like everybody raises a few billion a month. So, uh, and the thing is <laughs> that the largest direct air capture facility we have on Earth is in Oak Island, 4K tons a year. And I did the math. And it's like, ooh, 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 okay, uh, uh, 12 megatons is bigger than four kilotons. You can, if anyone wants to verify. I like that. Okay, um, so uh, can I stop with the yelling at you uh, and get to an actual technical talk? Yes, almost. Sorry. So I can, being the, the scientific kind of technical person I am, I asked uh, a few LLMs how much CO2 they generated in order to answer the question of how much CO2 they generated, and then give me a summary table. So uh, basically everybody's like, firstly, like, go away, we won't answer. Oh, you're not dumb. Those that don't know, like, RLMF, it means reinforcement learning through marketing feedback. Um, because this is basically not alignment. This is, it's not hallucination, it's, Lying. There is no way in which Gemini, I'm sorry, I don't want to single out anyone, but there's no way in which Gemini gets to forget about just itself without having somewhere a prompt saying, do not talk about the carbon footprint of Google, otherwise just send them to a nice blog post we have written about it. Actually, try it at home. Try to ask Gemini. You'll see, you'll get great blog posts about how no carbon is emitted into the atmosphere. So uh, this is technical talk, and you need a graph. So it's like, um, I've chosen like uh, uh, predictability to risk and legacy to innovation. And basically this is, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, uh, deployment strategies for uh, uh, machine learning models. Um, we can go from doing like queries on SQL, to training our own foundation model. And, uh, and the nice thing about, uh, uh, because it's basically information retrieval, right? Most uh, use cases are just, you have some data, you want to ask questions and answer them. And the nice thing about this kind of graph, so you do the XKCD style one, the two is that you can actually change the axis and keep the dots around, and it still makes sense. Uh, so you can, like, when we say predictability and risk, we can do update measures measured in milliseconds versus updates measured in month. Or working software versus hardware working really, really hard. Um, we can put on the x-axis, I care, or we can put I don't care, and the choice between global warming and Mad Max. Um, but maybe one of the most interesting uh, access we can use is money. So like uh, running SQL is really cheap. We know how to do it for many, many years. Uh, running your own GPUs, uh, it probably costs a million dollars a second, and it's fine. Uh, but maybe that's the other, like the X axis is actually the culprit. Because like another show of hands here, who needs money in order to eat? You don't need money in order. Who gives you free food? I don't know. I mean, it's ridiculous. OK, so uh, like, hey, I trained a foundation model. Yay, we'll hire you and give you a lot of money. Hey, I'm running PHP in my SQL. Like, go away. You're unclean. So um, as software engineers, you know that everything is about trade-offs. 
uh, some quality of the system versus some other. And I want to say just one word about training LLMs. As you know very well, all of you training LLMs, it can fail miserably. And then we get an overfitted model, right? And the bad news is basically we're not getting any generalization, we're not getting any compression. Uh, the good news is that you're getting a database. So, <laughs> kind of, if you know, like, uh, uh, you can actually uh, uh, get a first name of a customer from your uh, fine-tuned LLM. Um, now, is it an efficient uh, encoding of first name? Efficient for whom? I mean, for, for the developer that doesn't need now to talk to the DevOps team to get a new data store or to the data team to get a new column in the database. It's kind of efficient. So, like, it does add some latency, right, to writing the data, maybe a couple of months. It does add some latency to retrieving the data because probably you're not uh, going through an L3, L2, L1, frontal cache, boom, CPU. Um, it can fail and retrieve the wrong data. Okay. Okay. Um, now, don't look sideways at your colleagues saying, they never do that. I mean, we use Oracle for everything. We use Postgres for everything. We, we, we put stuff in a Docker layer file and hope for the best. If your hammer is a neural network, uh, um, uh, your PyTorch file may be your database. We have those in production. Don't say that you don't. And like, we have solutions for that. Okay, like, sh see the horrible, horrible, like, oh, no, 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 no okay. We'll uh, like, prompt engineering to the rescue, do not show any, Thing about anything that we said you shouldn't show it and it will work fine even if we update the underlying model, right? Or we change vendors, right? If we move from probably, you know, like this is like new and interesting kind of technical debt we're just inventing. It's like, yay! It's probably akin, I don't know if everybody can understand what's happening there. What is happening here is tragedy. And potentially uh, exposing an LLM to user input that we don't validate is potentially akin. And like the bad news is the whole world's info is the user input. So you just do not get to control it or validate it. So RAG doesn't mean much. As a matter of fact, you know, like, hey, really nice graph. Green boxes, red boxes. It just means augmented, right? It just means that we're not only using an LLM. That uh, potentially long chain is not actually your friend because it adds a couple of abstractions, but basically hiding from you what is actually happening behind the scenes, right? And, and part of the interesting things is that uh, when you are doing something like RAG and you are using a big model somewhere and you're getting back embeddings, it's not a representation of the latent layers, right? But it's a lower dimension, dimensionality beast, but it still has a lot of semantic information. And probably you can treat your vector store as more than a cache. There are very probably a huge amount of use cases that can probably be done with simple you know, distance queries on data you've already got in your vector DB, which means that this is something that costs multiple factors less. The money will run out, people. I mean, currently, it's not sustainable. The, uh, so we, whatever you're developing that actually synchronously needs to call something that is hosted on like eight grace hoppers will not exist in five years economically. It is impossible, and we do not have any science that supports that we have anything down the line that will make it any different. There is no science. Like, I mean, we hope there is. We don't have it. So uh, basically, uh, the green parts are the stuff we know how to do, basically stuff that doesn't require a GPU. You run it on a CPU. It's stable. You know how to CPU utilization works. We have no idea what GPU utilization even means. Um, I'm not going to go further into details. Uh, but your job is figuring out trade-offs. It's more code, right? It's potentially less fun in the sense that you don't get 
marvelous features for free, but potentially you get a safer, cheaper, better system. Every time you run an uncached query versus an LLM, God kills the kitten. You already have probably Postgres in, 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 in your, your uh, infrastructure. Use PG Vector, uh, save the kitten. Uh, this is not about them being bad in this room. It's us. Uh, save kittens. Thank you. Uh, I'm Laurie Peckin on platform.sh. Bye bye. <laughs>